directing an invisible movie. Uh, why don't you direct uh, movies uh, more often? Well, the great thing about being a writer is um, you've got these people that, uh, that don't exist. You know, you're just sitting in this room with people that don't exist. And when you get sick of them, you just walk out the door, you know, but uh, if you're a director, I mean, and I have directed, I mean, I have directed some, uh, I've directed a, a few short films and I've directed one feature length film. Um, and uh, it's kind of fun up to a point. I mean, I love doing kind of short films and I love doing kind of band videos, which I've done a few of, but uh, the, the feature film I directed, I found it very hard. I found it very kind of tough going because after a after a few weeks, you start to get a bit fed up with the people that are there, and you've got to be this happy kind of happy camper and keep everybody on side. And you know, I mean, it's like everybody, you know, a, a bunch of people. You know, they're all gonna have, they're gonna have their ups and downs and their their fallout. And um, there's that terrible sag in the middle of a, a movie, which. Um, you know, you kind of, uh, if you know, most of them are away from home, they're not, you know, they've not got their, friend, their family around them, they're not sleeping in their own beds, and the accommodation they have might not be what they want, you know, they might, you know, they're, they're, they're generally kind of, um, you know, they're not happy, and you're the person who has to deal with that kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. And, uh, I mean, if you, you know, it's part, of, part and parcel of the job, and it, I mean, and it's, uh, but it's you know something that I've you know that I've done and I probably will do again. But it's not my kind of first sort of instinct. I'm probably you know I'm, I'm probably more interested in ter in producing um, rather than sort of directing, simply because there's more money in that as well. Че е конечно прашане из публика каде двиги на тарелка во мо тоа се редува. Besides this uh, parallel I try to make between uh, junkies and consumers in the beginning of our discussion, there is another um, another common theme in your uh, writing that I think resonates very strongly with the uh, current uh, uh, global economic situation, and this is the the society where failure fail, failure becomes a norm. I mean. Uh, did you think about this uh, consciously uh, when you were writing, or uh, I mean, the, did you choose this uh, set of characters that you usually choose? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, as, as I've said before, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry if anybody was there last night. You kind of think that I'm just like a parrot here, basically. But I, I think I was saying last night that uh, as a writer, my kind of line of inquiry as a writer is to look at. Um, to look at how people mess up, you know, how they fuck up and how they make all the wrong decisions uh, to self-sabotage. And, um, and I think a lot of that is to do with um, being in a subculture where kind of failure becomes a norm and to actually succeed uh, is something that becomes quite threatening and kind of, you know, has a possibility of removing you away from your comfort zone and the people that you feel comfortable with. So I think that um, I kind of, a lot of my work is I kind of um, repeats that theme basically, and uh, I think with train spotting it certainly is that. And I think you know if you look at um, you see it very I, th I think you see it even more clearly in the movie than you do in the book. But um, you can basically see that throughout the movie, um, if you watch, I think one of the reasons I think Ewan McGregor's performance is so brilliant as Renton is. Um, a lot of the stuff that, uh, a lot of the acting that he does isn't the camera. If you look at him and you, and you watch his reactions to other people, particularly in the groups, he's looking at everything, he's evaluating everything, he's looking at every single character and he's basically ramping himself up to get the fuck out of there. You know, he's, he's testing every kind of sort of uh, parameter, every kind of uh, potential sort of comeback for him. Uh, what happens? if he absconds with the money and you can look at his performance in that light and you can see that uh, you actually see that this guy all along is preparing <laughs> to do a runner uh, and that's that's the kind of thing like psychologically he's preparing to get away and to move out and to do that he's got to get you know he's got to get through that fear that kind of um that fear of failure and to to, to to realise that uh, he can't actually do 
he can't meet his kind of personal objectives uh, within that kind of subculture that he's that he feels that he's trapped into. Um, we're going to see you in also in a cameo, a small role appearance in uh, tonight's movie, and uh, th that became a, almost a tradition in the films that were made after your literature. How how come? Um, yeah, I mean, I got I got quite into doing bits and pieces of acting uh, after that. I mean, people sort of um, just asked me to be in kind of you know different films and TV stuff, and I'm when you I mean I'm not a I've done a, I've done quite a lot of small things. I mean, you probably if you look at some kind of British kind of movies or TV shows, you'll maybe see me as a body being loaded onto the stretcher or something like that. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's like because you get to know people in the industry and they say, well, yeah, and I think a lot a lot of it is cost as well. I mean, British, you know, independent films are shot on nothing. So if you don't pay people and you kind of uh, appeal to their vanity, you say, come into this, you know, how to do this. So um, shot into, in this movie. I mean, I went through a phase, but I was living in Ireland. I went through a phase that was in just about uh, every Irish film that came out as a you know one person sort of uh, doing something or other. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's funny the two film the um, the film of filth and the film of ecstasy, which was out last year. Ecstasy was out last year. Filth's coming out this year. A bit, my scenes have actually been cut out. Both of them. I'm in the DVD extras. So, uh, so I mean, it's, uh, I'm not going to give up the day job for acting anytime soon. <laughs> but we we have seen you in a poster in Ecstasy in uh, one half a second or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this one, this one in, in filth actually, uh, I've managed to escape the cut in some ways because uh, there was a scene I was in, I was interviewing James McAvoy's character. I was a journalist and he was the cop, and the scene was cut out. Uh, but um, the, the, the character was taken into this ambulance and you can actually still see me in the reflection of the glass in the ambulance window. So I kind of sort of sneaked my way back into it. Um, could you comment a bit on your collabor collaborative work, uh, like uh, The Wedding Bells, uh, a very nice uh, black comedy, uh, which... Uh, yeah, I mean, Wedding Bells is a, is a, it's not been seen over here, I don't think, but um, it's a strange thing because uh, there was a dispute between um, uh, Channel 4 and Film 4, which you, 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 you don't think there should be a dispute between Channel 4 and Film 4 because they're the same company, basically, but there was a dispute about the TV wing and the film wing about who actually owned Wedding Bells. And as a result of that, it kind of, um, it hasn't really been seen much, it's never really done much, it's never been around festivals, but, um, but it's a very good film, and uh, it was uh, written by myself and uh, Dean Kavanagh, and directed by Philip John, uh, and uh, it's got an amazing cast too, you know, that, that was a, it was a very good uh, film to work in, it's got a, um, you know, Michelle Gomez, Michael Fassbender, and Shirley Henderson, and um, you know, it's just it's it's kind of such a stellar cast. It's a shame that it's uh, it's not you know it's not been given. You know, it's, it's basically kind of um, been buried from the public view, and that's that often kind of um, for all sorts of strange kind of political kind of business reasons that happens so much with movies. It's quite sad that there's so many really great movies that uh, people don't get a chance to see, you know, per, you know perversely. Well, you've done a couple of more things with Dean also, uh, as a screenwriter. Yeah, yeah, we did uh, the, the film Good Arrows, which was a TV movie which I directed, yeah. and uh, we kind of um, we wrote the screenplay for that, and um, we're actually working on a musical, a Britpop musical, with um, with Alan McGee, who was the guy, Creation Records guy, you know, the guy who discovered Oasis, but didn't discover Oasis, but he signed him. And uh, Oasis and Primal Scream, and uh, you know, sort of um, a host of other bands, like Teenage Fan Club and all that stuff. So we're, Alan's trying to license all these songs, and we're doing this, um, this kind of stage play with the Ambassadors Theatre Group in, in London. 
uh, you said that uh, you hold all the um, all the adaptation rights uh, to your uh, literature. So my question would be: To what extent do you want to be involved in the in the adaptations that you do not directly write a screenplay for? It depends. I mean, it's like um, you you like to find somebody who knows what they're doing. I mean, uh, when Train Spotting came out. It seemed that everybody wanted to adapt it for the screen, and um, it was uh, it was like um, I mean everybody wanted so many people wanted to do it as this very dreary kind of social realist kind of movie that you know, like Christian F and all these kind of drug movies that are very worthy but very very boring and nobody wants to see them because the characters are crushed and defeated and spiritless and. Uh, I know that you know drug addiction does that to people, but it's not that kind of. It's almost this like kind of um, this terrible kind of sort of warning and cautionary tales and all that. It doesn't actually tell you why people take drugs in the first place. You know, and it's like, um, and you have to show that you know that there's a dual reality about these things. You know, the first reason that people take drugs is because they're fun. They're fucking great fun, and you have to show that. The second thing you have to show is that they actually kill you if you keep taking them. And these these are two these are two dichotomies, and and um, it's very very difficult to to show one of these things without the other. And I think that Trainspotting was probably the first movie to do that. You know, and, and I think and uh, therefore I mean, it's like when it came out um, when the book came out, I was condemned by all the the health education and the sort of uh, people in the tourist board and all that. And now, it's like, if you look at all the health education material, it's just based on transporting. So, you know, it's, ba you know, so it's basically, um, it basically acknowledges that trajectory that uh, people get into things and do them because they're good fun and they keep doing them and, they, you know, they, and, this, and it becomes a way of hiding from the, the reality that they face and it's not good fun anymore and it's dangerous. So, uh, so these, that's the kind of thing that um, you kind of have to show, I think. And uh, yeah, I think I've rambled right off the point here. I don't know. Oh. Hello. Uh, any questions? <laughs>